It's been a while since I made a video about anything related to iOS, but I get comments all the time asking about bypassing different things like jailbreak detection on iOS, root detection on Android, emulator detection for Android. And I just recently had to bypass jailbreak detection for an app that I was working for in my day job. So I figured I might as well make a video about it while the topic is on my mind. And I'm actually gonna show you two different bypass methods because like most things in the world of mobile hacking, there's really no such thing as a one size fits all solution. And what works for one app may not work for the next app. So real quick, just to set the scene before we get started, the device that I'm gonna be using for this example is this iPhone 7 running iOS 15. So it's a bit of an older device, but it should still work for anything up to at least iOS 16 and probably iOS 17 as well. And this device is jailbroken with Pale Rain using a rootful jailbreak. And I actually have a video on my channel that I posted a long time ago showing how to do that. And I'll leave like a card up here to link to that video if you wanna check it out. And the application that I'm gonna be using to test this is the DVI. IA v2 or damn vulnerable iOS application that you can get off GitHub. I'll include a link to this in the description as well, but this application just has a lot of different vulnerabilities in it that you can use as a test and example application. And one of them is jailbreak detection. And you can see right here that there are five different jailbreak tests and we're gonna go through all of them for both of these methods that we're gonna go over. And I did actually have to re-sign the IPA file in order to install this application on my device. And that's another thing that I've gone over in the past in the previous video. But if you don't know how to do that, I'll link another card up here in the corner so you can go check that out as well. But the first bypass method that we're gonna use is actually using our good friend Frida that we've used a ton in the past in a bunch of different videos and something that I use every day in my day job. And we're just gonna use this script that you can find in the Frida code share. And of course, in order to use this Frida script, you will have to have Frida installed on the device, which I've covered many times in the past, but you can see right here that you just need to install the package from the Cilio package manager. And you will also have to have Frida installed on your actual machine that you're testing from. And like I've done many times in the past, anytime I'm working with iOS, I prefer using a MacBook or some sort of Mac device, just because that makes it a lot easier to work with iOS. Every time I talk about it, I get comments saying that you don't need Macs and they're overpriced garbage and all that stuff, which is fine. You can have that opinion if you want to. But in my years of experience, as well as many other people in the security industry that work with iOS devices, it's just way easier to work with Macs whenever you're dealing with iOS stuff. But once we have Frida installed on the device, we have Frida installed on our machine. We're just going to run Frida-PS-UIA. And that's just a little smoke test to make sure that Frida is working and we're able to communicate with our device from our testing machine. And it also shows us the package name of the application that we want to work with. In my case, the package name is coresecure.dvia, but that's just because that's what I resigned it as whenever I went through that whole resigning process. In your case, it would probably be different. But no matter what that package name is, you can run this test in order to find the package name for your application that you're working with. So now that we have everything installed and we have our package name, we're just going to run this command for this script from the code share. And after that dash F flag, we're going to put our package name that we found from that smoke test we ran earlier. And we're also gonna to have to put a dash U at the end of that script because we are connected over USB. So now that we have everything installed and we have the package name, we're ready to run our script. But before we do that, I wanna actually go through these tests just to show you what they do. So in this app, we have five different jailbreak tests and some of them work different ways. I don't know all the details of exactly what they're looking at to figure out if it's jailbroken or not. But if we just go through all five of the tests real quick, test one, device is jailbroken. Test two, device is jailbroken. Test three, device is jailbroken. The application will now exit. Strangely enough, the application didn't actually exit on that one and I'm not really sure why. Test four, device is jailbroken exiting. And after that test, the application actually did crash. And if we go back to it and try the very last test, jailbreak test five, oops, something went wrong, the application will now exit. And again, the application crashed. So now that we know what we're working with, I'm going to go back to our terminal and I'm going to run this command to launch the application again. And this time the application runs, but it's now injected with this Frida script. So hopefully it will actually bypass those jailbreak tests. And once again, we can go through all five of these tests and see what happens. Test one, device is not jailbroken. And you can see in the logs over in the terminal how it's hooking different functions and it's changing how it's actually interpreting some of these things and it's bypassing the responses that it's supposed to be getting. Jailbreak test two, device is not jailbroken. Jailbreak test three, device is not jailbroken. Jailbreak test four, device is not jailbroken. Jailbreak test five device is not jailbroken. So we were able to bypass all five of those different jailbreak detection tests. 
So this is actually a really good Frida script that is probably going to work for a lot of applications that are doing jailbreak detection. And you can scroll through the code here and see all the different things that it's checking for the bypass. But like I said at the beginning of the video, there's no such thing as a one size fits all solution. There are a lot of applications that this will not work on and you're just going to have to find another solution. In fact, the application that I was just recently working on, this script did not work to bypass jailbreak detection for that app. So I'm gonna show you another bypass method that is actually going to be using a tweak from the Cilio package manager. The tweak that I'm gonna show you is called Shadow and you can look it up on GitHub if you wanna learn more information about it, but I'm just gonna go through the steps to actually get it installed and also gonna go through how to set up the dependencies and stuff you need because I actually had some trouble with this when I was trying to set it up the other day. But the first thing you need to do is go to your Cilio package manager and go to add source and add iOS dot j j o l a n o dot m e and once that source is added you're just going to open up that package and you're going to go to system and you're going to find shadow and you're going to try to get that but it's probably not going to work because you're going to need some dependencies we click get and then q we see we get a bunch of errors because there are some dependencies that we need so i'm just going to hit the minus sign there delete and i'm going to go back and add one more source and this one is going to be lkit.space. And this is actually a dependency that it took me a long time to find. I actually had to talk to one of my coworkers and they were able to help me out and show me what they had done previously when they had done this. But if we add that source, now when we open up that one, all categories, we see lkit. I'm just going to get that, Q, confirm. And it's going to ask us to reboot the device. So we're gonna do that. And we're going to need one more dependency, and this is one that is actually listed in the GitHub here in the installation instructions. This is going to be OPA334's repo. So once again, we're going to add a source for OPA334.github.io, and we're going to add that source. And if we go back to Shadow one more time and hit Git and Q, we see that we need a few different dependencies still. One of them is the OPA334.alt list. And one of them is the OPA334.libsandy. So once again, I'm going to hit that minus sign, delete. And I'm going to open up the OPA334 repo. And I'm going to go to that alt list. Cue that one up. And I'm going to go to libsandy. Cue that one up. And now I'm gonna go back to Shadow, try to install that one again, and hope I've got all the dependencies now. So this time when I queued up Shadow, I'm not getting any errors, it's just queuing up a bunch of other things that it's going to install along the way. So I'm just going to hit confirm and see what happens. And it looks like everything installed without any problems, so I'm going to hit done. And now if I go to my phone settings and scroll down to the bottom, I actually see this new menu option for Shadow. One quick disclaimer here before we get started with Shadow though, there have been situations where I've used Shadow where it actually made a lot of things not work correctly on my device. Any application that use like web views would sometimes not work. Sometimes just trying to use the web browser in the mobile device wouldn't work properly. It wouldn't just like properly go to websites and stuff. So in some ways, Shadow can be simpler because it's all on the device installing tweaks and stuff, and you don't have to run anything from your testing machine. You don't have to deal with scripts or anything like that. It's all contained on the device. So in that way, it can be much simpler to deal with than with a Frida script. But using tweaks like that can sometimes have other impacts on your device and make other things not work properly. So just something to be aware of if you are looking into Shadow or some other kind of tweak like this as your solution. So once we open up that settings menu for Shadow, we're going to go to bypass settings and we're going to make sure that all the essential hooks are on and the recommended hooks. And depending on what you're working with, you can also try some of the extra hooks or even some of the dangerous hooks that may cause different apps to crash or not work properly. And then we're gonna to go to the application settings and we're going to open up the settings for the application that we're working with, which in this case is DVIA v2. And we're going to enable shadow and we're also going to just start by just turning on all the essential hooks. And just with the other settings menu, you can try all these other hooks. If these aren't working for you, you might have better luck if you try some of the others. But I would recommend just starting with the essential hooks and see how far that gets you. And I'll be honest here, I haven't actually tried this bypass method with this particular application that we're working with. So I don't actually know if it's gonna work. But I just wanted to show two different bypass methods because I've seen them both work on different apps and sometimes one works and one doesn't. But if we go back to our app, now that we have those essential hooks turned on in Shadow, and if we try the different jailbreak tests, device is jailbroken. So it's actually not working. It's not bypassing for that first test at least. 
Test two, device is jailbroken. Test three, device is jailbroken. Test four, device is jailbroken. Test five, oops, something went wrong. The application will now exit. So that bypass method didn't actually work for this application. And just for science, I'm going to try turning on every single hook, even the dangerous ones, just to see if that does anything. I don't know if it will, it might still not work. And I'm actually gonna go to the bypass settings and turn on all those hooks as well. So now we're throwing the kitchen sink at it. We're doing everything that Shadow is capable of doing to try to bypass it and see what happens. Again, it may not work. Sometimes these bypass methods just don't work for a particular application for whatever reason. So let's try it again, test one. Device is jailbroken, test two, device is jailbroken, test three, device is jailbroken, test four, device is jailbroken, test five, something went wrong, the application will now exit. So in this case, every single bypass we could do with Shadow did not work for this application, but the free to bypass worked perfectly. And just as an anecdote, the application that I was just working on at work the other day, that one, the free to bypass did not work, but Shadow worked perfectly. So I just wanna reiterate and make it clear that there's no such thing as a one size fits all solution. In the world of mobile hacking and really the world of hacking in general, you really never have just a, this is the thing that works all the time. You're constantly going to run into situations where something doesn't work and you're gonna have to find a new solution. But I hope between these two things that I showed in this video, if you do run into some jailbreak detection that you have to bypass, you'll be able to find a way to get one of these two solutions to work for you.